14 years after it launched, Facebook is arguably the most powerful company in the world. 1.4 billion people use it every day. More than the population of any country on Earth except China, the story that you've created represents the American dream. You know, I mean, our mission at Facebook is to help connect everyone in the world. We take that responsibility very seriously. But a series of recent scandals has exposed problems at the heart of the social network. And Mr. Zuckerberg, I think we all agree that what happened here was bad. You acknowledged it was a breach of trust. And I just want to be clear that you're going to take early action. In this film, we go undercover with Facebook's content moderators to reveal how Facebook decides what you can see on its platform. If they're actually eating them, they look like they had them set out like there was tomatoes and like a sauce with it all. Oh, wow. But so for that, it's feeding purposes. With billions of pieces of content uploaded every day, these decisions have far-reaching consequences. A video of someone dying is not necessarily going to be a delete. But how they're made has been shrouded in secrecy until now. You shouldn't be speaking about work-related um, topics, okay? You're not to disclose any information. Like, that's not to happen. From violence... <laughs> To hate speech, we reveal how Facebook deals with extreme content. After thinking, what are I think that's fine. Oh, oh god damn, that's okay. so firm. And they look fresh, those cuts. With graphic videos routinely left on the site. She gets battered. She, you know, at this stage, like, needs her in the face. She's helpless, I would say. And far right groups getting special protection. Well, obviously, they have a lot of followers, so they're generating a lot of revenue for Facebook. Is Facebook putting profit before safety? If you start censoring too much, then people lose interest in the platform. Right. It's all about it's all about making money at the end of the day. Facebook to bring the world close together. That's the mission of the whole company. This year, Facebook published a set of rules about what content is allowed on its platform. To build and preserve the world's engagement and trust in Facebook. That's the mission of Community Operations Department, the one that we work for. But former content moderators have told us there are serious problems with the way these rules are applied. So we're going undercover at Facebook's largest centre for UK content moderation in Dublin. Facebook has outsourced a lot of this activity. Our reporter is working for a company called CPL Resources. There's a piece in the policies that you shouldn't be speaking about work-related um, topics, OK? You're not to disclose any information. Like, that's not to happen. Facebook and CPL are highly secretive about the work. So again, no matter how drunk you are, make sure that you don't uh, actually reveal the information about what you're actually uh, doing here. So I'm going to go with you and give you kind of like your first kind of glimpse of what you're going to be doing as a content moderator. We're going to follow Facebook's policies and decide whether to ignore or delete what we have. And that's basically it, yeah. Every week, Millions of pieces of content are reported to Facebook by users who think they should be deleted. So these are some of the examples. These two are the photos that we are going to delete because these, uh, the, the nipples here are not covered by anything. Both the nipples and areola, it's completely open. So in that case, we are going to take it down. Unlike other media, there is little regulation restricting what can appear on the social network. So the decision to delete or ignore is entirely up to Facebook. I mean, it started off in US colleges, and then we launched in US high schools, then a little bit in US corporations. And um, since when we opened up the site, and actually last September of six, growth started exploding internationally. When I first met Zuck, he was 22 years old. And from that moment forward, for a period of about three years, I was one of the people that he turned to for mentoring. 
Venture capitalist Roger McNamee was one of Facebook's early investors and a mentor to founder Mark Zuckerberg. He was absolutely convinced that connecting the world was possible and that that should be his mission. We believe really deeply that if people are sharing more, then the world will be a more open place where people can understand what's going on with the people around them. And that's really what we want to get towards. I was more proud of Facebook than anything I'd ever done in a 35, 36 year career before I understood what was going on. images in this presentation. Very often my system of One of the most sensitive areas of Facebook's content rulebook is the section on graphic violence. Just to note again, if you like any of this like stuff, when you look at it, it makes you feel ill, please step outside, grab a cup of water or whatever item on it. We have our three actions. We have ignore, there's no action taken, delete or remove it from Facebook, and mark as disturbing is restrictions on place on who can see the content and how it is presented. When content is marked as disturbing, a warning is added. To make the content viewable, users must click on this warning. Under 18 should not be able to view the content, but it remains on the site and freely available to anyone claiming to be over 18. A video of someone dying is not necessarily going to be a delete, but it might be a market system. Why is it removed? Why isn't there really? Yeah, just because it doesn't... So, like, the policies might change, but, like, basically Facebook has to... You have to pick a line as to why, whether this content can stay up or not, and it's been decided that videos of people who died do not show, like, any of these. We will just mark them as disturbing so people can still share them, like, raise awareness and whatever. Mm. So, that was violent death. The next policy is child abuse. This is videos that show a child abuse and it's defined as one of the following. The repeated kicking, beating, or slapping of a child by an adult or an animal. And then we also have the inflicting of a burn or a cut wounds by an adult or the tossing, rotating, or shaking of an infant too young to stand by their wrists, ankles, legs, arms, or neck. And we always mark as disturbing child abuse. We never delete it, or we never ignore it. So here's the example. In the video, the man repeatedly kicks the child. And for that reason, it's marked as disturbing. Do you recognize those images? I do, yeah. They're from my video. What video are they from? They are from a video that was actually sent to us from one of our supporters asking for help with it. Somebody um, inboxed us on the Facebook page with that, um, asking for help because it's something that they'd seen and they were obviously, they were scared, they didn't want to go. <laughs> So initially you see a little tiny boy, he must be about two or three, on the video with a man talking to him and shouting at him. Um, and then he was hitting him and punching him. He was throwing him about and then he was stamping and kicking on him. And then obviously the video cut. So you're left with knowing absolutely nothing apart from a sickening feeling that you've just You've seen some man beating a, a tiny little boy. I mean, you know yourself from watching that video that that child's not just got up and skipped off out to go and play. You know he's, he's hurt. You do. You actually you can't get it out of your head. That is literally all you see, and that's all you think about is that little boy, and where is he? In the, where is he, and what's happening to him? Did you report the video to Facebook? Um, I did initially, and we received a message back saying it didn't violate their, <laughs> their terms and conditions, which is bizarre. 
They left it all. It wasn't removed. Quite a... Not a grey area, but it's, it's sort of interesting to... The mad stuff. Yeah, because it's sort of... Obviously, it's still technically on the... On the birth Our reporter asks another moderator why he thinks some graphic content gets marked as disturbing rather than deleted. Do you know what their the reasoning is behind... For them? a better user experience, the thing is, like, <laughs> yes. people of all, of all ages use it, so if a bunch of kids, nine-year-old kids were to go on and see someone getting, like, the shit kicked out of them. Yeah. You know, it's all for safety of the user and the younger user. But do you think it should just be deleted in that case, then? Mm, no, because, like, kind of too much censorship, then. OK. If you start censoring too much, then people lose interest in the platform. Right. It's all, about, it's all about making money at the end of the day. In the first two days after it was posted on Facebook, the video of the little boy being beaten was shared more than 44,000 times. From Facebook's point of view, this is essentially, you know, the crack cocaine of their, of their product, right? It's the really extreme, really dangerous form of content that attracts the most highly engaged people on the platform. Facebook understood that it was desirable to have people spend more time on site. If you're going to have an advertising-based business, you need them to see the ads, so you want them to spend more time on site. And what Facebook has learned is that the people on the extremes are the really valuable ones. Because one person on either extreme can often provoke 50 or 100 other people. And so they want as much extreme content as they can get. We put the results of our investigation to Facebook's Vice President of Global Policy. Shocking content does not make us more money. It's just a, a misunderstanding of how the system works. Shocking content surely keeps people on Facebook. That means it's more likely that they will view your advertising. That makes you money. Again, that's why shocking content is good for Facebook. Again, I, I don't, that's not our experience of the people who use our service around the world. There is a minority who are prepared to abuse our systems and other internet platforms to share the most offensive kind of material. Uh, but I just don't agree that that is the experience that most people want, and that's not the experience we're trying to deliver. There's myself and there's a couple of other admins on that page. So there were three of us looking to see if you could find anything on Google, if you could find if it were current, if it had been going around for a while. We've no idea where to go with this. And if you report to Facebook, no happens. So it's, it was, there were three of us just searching to try and find out some information on that video and to tell you that a little boy's safe. What has to be done to escalate? Yeah, right. Like in the videos of what, like five minutes ago, the kid is beating and we just mark as the serpent, that's it? Yes. There is this no, the so, odd thing. Yeah. We do have so, policies for live video, I which are different. Things. Things. This is going to be videos that are not live. And like 99% of these will be viral videos or photos. Let's say there's a video and yeah. the caption is, I like, just saw this a few minutes ago. Like, it's just so long. Like, you know, there's just nothing we can do, really. Our investigation found that unless they are streamed live, videos of physical child abuse are not usually reported to the police. The sort of investigation process or follow-up process after you've MAD'd. After you've mad something? Hmm. No? Not on, on, on child physical abuse or anything like that? No. Um, yeah, the only stuff that's like... Anything happens is the stuff that meets our operation criteria. Okay. Otherwise, it's just, as far as we're concerned, unfortunately, it's just junk floating around in the internet. Mm. And yeah, I know it's weird. Would Facebook do anything? Would they possibly? No. Unless, if you see something where a child is getting horrendous, like this, there's all the stuff live video, so that's all like, you know, mm. that's live, and they have different guidelines that I don't understand. Okay. But there's that video of someone getting domestically abused ages ago is not going to be reported by us to the police. I think in reality, someone is going to, I don't know. What do you know now about um, how, how the little boy is? We found out that this was in Malaysia, that this child had been hospitalised and uh, it was a stepfather had been arrested and jailed for 12 months. 
But how long ago was it that you first came across that video? Um, that was in, I think it was December 2012. So it's been six years, almost. Is that video still on Facebook? It is, yeah. <laughs> This video is used in Facebook's training as an example of the kind of child abuse that should be marked as disturbing and left on the site. If that's being used as an example for moderators of what is considered acceptable to say what is tolerated on Facebook is, 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 is truly shocking. This is Facebook's justification for why they allow content like that on the site. Um, in order to aid in the possible identification and rescue of victims of physical child abuse, we may not immediately remove this content from Facebook. It's perfectly possible for Facebook to take down footage of child abuse and for that to be passed to the authorities or for a copy of that material uh, to be retained if that will assist in a law enforcement, in a policing investigation. It's difficult to conclude why that material would need to stay on the site. We know that for as long as that content can remain on a social media site, uh, then that exacerbates the, the, the trauma that children might feel. Not only has that child been subject to um, sustained physical abuse, but unfortunately that child is being uh, re-abused by the fact that that content is there for anyone to go onto Facebook and see. Unfortunately, that child is being re-abused with every click. Why was that on Facebook? Um, an individual shared it. I want to be clear that that's not acceptable. That shouldn't be there. That material should have been taken down. On the site that you went to, the CPL site, you see part of the total system. So those are the frontline reviewers. But behind them sits a, a, a team of child safety experts. They're actually Facebook full-time staff. They will make an assessment of whether the child is at risk. They will make a decision about what to do with the content, including referring it to law enforcement agencies where that's appropriate. A week after we made Facebook aware of this child abuse video, it was still available on the platform. They told us they have now reviewed the material used to train new moderators. We're filming undercover in one of Facebook's largest content moderation centres to reveal how the social network decides what you can see on its platform. OK, that's fine. If a user finds a piece of content they think is inappropriate, they can report it to Facebook. A moderator will then decide whether or not it breaks the platform's rules. That one, it's, they're actually eating them. Like they have, it looks like they had them set out like there was tomatoes and like a sauce with it and all. Oh wow. So for that, it's feeding purposes. Each of these reports is called a ticket and the tickets build up in queues that the moderators work through. After three and a half weeks of training, our reporter is now working through his own queue of tickets. Just this for all, I'm always a bit, just what I want, clarification. <laughs> so the video we've just seen, it's basically a fight. To, to me, I'm pretty sure they're minors. Um, it's kind of just two girls fighting. They're talking about, bit, they mention like being at school and stuff and that kind of thing. Our reporter is moderating a video showing two teenage girls fighting. Both girls are clearly identifiable and the video has been shared more than a thousand times. One is definitely more like dominant than the other. Like she, you know, at this stage, like knees her in the face and all stuff like that. Because yeah. she gets battered. <laughs> yeah, she's, help she's, she's helpless, I would say. I know, yeah. My friend phoned me up um, and she's like, have you, have you been on Facebook? And she's like, there's a video of your daughter. She's like, you need to see it. You see them start to fight, then it, they keep fighting and then throw each other on the floor. 
but then the other girl gets up and basically just goes to town on my daughter and just repeatedly knees and kicks her in, in the head um, and just looks, she just looks out of control basically. She looks like a wild animal. To wake up the next day and find out that literally the whole world is watching as what I've seen it must have been, you know, horrifying. It was humiliating for her. The video has been posted with a caption condemning the violence. This is only a new policy. Yeah. yeah. I just want to propose the policy change with them. Even if, it's even if it's condemning, it's mad. Yeah. And it, I, if it, like everything but a condemning is a delete, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I think that's what I gathered from the last. Anyway. I haven't had any examples of it yet. Cool. Following a recent change to the policy, even experienced moderators are not sure whether the video should be deleted or marked as disturbing and left on the site. Well, any it's, so anything on a video of physical bullying with minors, unless it has condemning caption, it's a delete. Anyway, this one is a mad. This is a mad, yeah. Because it's condemnation. Okay. Because there's a caption condemning the violence, the video gets marked as disturbing and left on the site. It's a delete there, yeah. We show footage from our undercover filming to the girl's mother. So anything on a video of physical bullying for minors, unless it has a condemning caption, it's a delete. Shouldn't really have been a question about where to take it down, shouldn't I? It shouldn't, it shouldn't have been a discussion. Was, he said himself that girls are getting battered, so that shouldn't really have been. They shouldn't have been questioning. You see the images, and it it's horrible. It's it's disgusting. So why was it this? Why was it a discussion? Why was it a discussion whether to take that down? I don't I don't get it. That you know that someone's child being fired in the park. It's not Facebook entertainment. So that's interesting because I I swear if there is like bullying between two minors, it, you can just delete it. You see what I'm saying? Spreading awareness. Okay. Like if they, if, this, if they want to pull up, saying this is what these girls did, um, or they want to look, I want to find these kids and bring them to justice because they left my, my daughter in hospital. OK. Uh, like, it would be unfair for a face to say. Right, I see. But if, like, if there was a caption saying, brilliant, she had it coming. Delete, delete. Yeah, OK. What about that? Is that a positive caption? reinforcement of it? No matter what caption is on that video, that should have been taken down. There, there are other ways to spread awareness without putting a video out there with someone's daughter being battered. There was no emotion about, oh my God, what's happening to that girl? They're not thinking of the bigger picture. They're just thinking about the policies. If they were watching a video of their own daughter, what decision would they make about that video? If a parent or guardian sees a video of their child in circumstances that they object to, they do have the right to insist that we take it down, and we do take it down where we're made aware. Uh, yes, sorry, you're putting the onus on the victim here to complain to you. Why aren't you taking this material down before it humiliates children? And again, if the content is shared in a way that praises or encourages that violence, it's going to come down. But where people are highlighting an issue, and condemning the issue, even if the issue is painful. There are a lot of circumstances where people will say to us, look, Facebook, you should not interfere with my ability to highlight a problem that's occurred. As people watch these videos, Facebook's making money. Uh, the money we make is by people uh, using the service and seeing ads within their newsfeed. Mark Zuckerberg was called before the US Senate and accused of not doing enough to protect Facebook's users. We want to hear more, without delay, about what Facebook and other companies plan to do to take greater responsibility for what happens on their platforms. 
It's not enough to just build tools. We need to make sure that they're used for good. Or in the last year, we've basically doubled the number of people doing security and content review. We're gonna uh, have more than 20,000 people working on security and content review by the end of this year. When you have 40 billion in sales and tens of billions of profit per year, you pretty much have an obligation to do everything in your power to make sure that you're not making the world worse for the users of your product. Recently, there's been a huge um, just spike in stuff getting reported. Like, we have constantly a backlog now. So, like, there was like 15,000 reports that needed to be done. That's right. You, you do maybe, the team would maybe do, like, say, 3,000 a day, and it, just, it doesn't look like it's ever gone down, so just more just keeps coming in. Facebook aims to assess all reported content within 24 hours, but it's become clear that there is a backlog of 15,000 tickets that have been waiting longer than that. I just want to say, guys, a big thanks for the efforts that are going in at the minute. Um, it's really been recognised, not just within CPL, but on a higher level in the management team on Facebook. I know the last couple of weeks have been really hard. The backlog is crazy. Our team is understaffed, and that's the way it is. If you hover in this bar, it's like over 57 hours. And it has like over 6,361 tickets in that one bar. Okay. So our latest ticket is at five days, 18 hours and 45 minutes, and that's very bad, because our turnaround time for this queue is 24 hours. Right. So that means we have to get everything down by 24 hours, and it's not going to have the web post. So within that high-risk queue, would there be anything like, um, say someone saying, I'm going to commit suicide in 10 minutes? Mm. Yes. Oh, would there? Yes. Any reports that related to somebody at risk of suicide would not have gone into the queue where there was a backlog. They would have gone into a high priority queue where we were meeting the standards. We've checked since you brought this issue to us and we are very confident that even in that period where we had a backlog in the normal queue, uh, we did not have a backlog in the suicide queue. So the CPL moderator was wrong? They were wrong in concerned. that instance, yes. Right, okay. Facebook told us this backlog was cleared by the 6th of April and they are doubling the number of people working on safety and security. Facebook considers this to be really important because it has a real impact and it could mean like harm, like real harm. So we prioritize this like way more than many other things. Our undercover reporter is being trained in how to deal with content relating to self-harm. So some examples of it, suicide and self-harm promotion. Any material promoting self-harm or suicide gets deleted. In the first one we have the photo of the gods. They don't really look fresh, they look more like heel gods. And the text means the way it feels. So this person is admitting that they like self-harm. So this is a promotion and we delete that. Any material that shows self-harm but doesn't promote it is called self-harm admission and gets left on the site without a warning. So anything to do with admission and we are going to send a checkpoint, it's because we're going to send resources to that person, like helplines, contact this person for help and all those sort of things. With self-harm admission, the user who posted the content is sent a message called a checkpoint containing information about mental health support services. So, yeah, the, the checkpoint means that we send, like, resources to help that okay, person. Okay, okay. But the content is not deleted okay. or removed. I think that probably around 65% of my scars I would attribute to the impact social media has had on me. There's definitely a bit of a rush of adrenaline. For me, seeing the blood was a release because it reminded me that there was something inside of me and that I wasn't as empty as I felt. What about this one? I'm fine, thanks. Yeah, it's important because she's a lot of famous. I'm fine. <laughs> Hopefully she's fine. So yeah, it's a checkpoint for self-harm.
somebody that I met who had Facebook, she used to regularly post pictures of her self-harm um, before they were healed and before they were scarring. Um, I would look at her pictures. And then there was also a group that I used to follow on Facebook. It meant that I was surrounding myself with people that were self-harming. It would encourage me to cut a lot more. It became a bit of a competition in that I felt like I needed to do deeper cuts and that I needed to have worse self-harm than the other person. Oh, God damn. Crikey. Whilst moderating, our reporter comes across graphic images of self-harm. So that was the uh, checkpoint. They look fresh, those cuts. Oh, they look great. That will be um, self-harm admission, I think, because it's not promotion. It's the first one I've seen in a while. Yeah. So that's, that's as bad as it gets. It's not appropriate. You can see that people have, have, have badly cut themselves. There's old scars there, so this isn't just a one-off and they're cutting themselves. That's not appropriate. That's not OK. Misery loves company. So if you can get out there and you can actually see people doing the thing that kind of is a representation of their misery, there might be something um, attractive in that and attractive to a, a mind that isn't functioning how it should be. Oh my god. Fucking okay, outside. That's. It looks like promotion, nearly, because. Uh, the flower. Happy and like. Oh, I just realised dance cuts as well. In the background. I didn't oh realise that was. Yeah. Three and three. Yeah, I would, uh, yeah. Do you think there's ever any justification for, for um, allowing unhealed, images of unhealed self-harm results? Not really, no, no. There are healthier ways of doing that. It's not that we don't want to listen to them, it's not that we don't want to help them. In the long run, it's, it's not a healthy thing to do. You know, this needs, this level of, of harm needs proper professional intervention and putting stuff out on social media is not professional intervention. Oh my God. I had a self-harm ticket in months and I was like four back and like, that's drugs though. That's heroin. <laughs> we, we're in a bad batch of tickets here. That's a, a self-harm admission. Even with the drugs? The drugs wouldn't matter at all. I just think it's something that's going to be hard for other people to understand who haven't experienced this. I think that self-harm is something that's so complex that um, it can't be characterised in a guideline or in a rule and it can't be understood by somebody who doesn't understand how it feels to do that. Would you ever look at um, images of self-harm on Facebook now? No, no, not at all. I'm strong enough for it not to affect me, but I'm not strong enough to take the risk of it. I believe that it wouldn't affect me, completely believe that, but I'm not prepared to take the chance. There's actually a, a very strong, valid interest from that person if they're expressing distress uh, to be able to express their distress to their family and friends, friends through Facebook and then get help. And we see that happen every day, that individuals are provided with help by their family and friends because the content stayed up. If we took it down, the family and friends would not know that that individual was at risk. Uh, I see that picture for me is a minor, like under 13. So I guess why not send the checkpoint? It's like the next different step of we, what we do. During the training session on self-harm, the issue of child users comes up. So we don't action uh, underage accounts unless they're admitting to be underage. Facebook's rules state that no one under 13 can have an account. Yeah, but they can lie. 
Facebook told us they only investigate a user's age if someone has reported them as being underage. Much of the content reported to Facebook's UK moderators relates to hate speech. So I'm sure you're going to have your personal opinions about what's right and what's not. Just bear in mind that we all have to follow the basic policies. No matter what our personal opinions are, we have to follow this. When Mark Zuckerberg appeared before the US Senate, he was questioned on Facebook's hate speech rules. Our goal is to allow people to have as much expression as possible. And I don't want anyone at our company to make any decisions based on the, the uh, political ideology of the content. Facebook say their rules are intended to protect certain groups from being abused or attacked on the platform. Calling for exclusion, death or harm of Muslims, we can remove it for visual hate. But we found moderators were sometimes told to ignore disturbing content. This one, when your daughter's first cross is a little meager boy. And it's been around for quite a while. Um, this is an ignore because it implies a lot, but to reach the actual violation, you have to jump through a lot of hoops to get there. There's no attack actually on the meager boy, it implies, but my golden rule is like if you have to jump through too many hoops to actually get what you're trying to think the content says, you've probably gone too far. So for this one, we should ignore this. Is everyone okay with that? Sorry. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook told us the picture does in fact violate their hate speech rules, and they're reviewing what went wrong to prevent it happening again. In order to create a service where everyone has a voice, uh, we also need to make sure that people aren't bullied or, um, or basically intimidated or the environment feels unsafe for them. But on Facebook, not everyone gets the same level of protection. I kind of instinctively think that this okay. is a delete. Our reporter is moderating a comment that says, fuck off back to your own countries. It's been posted beneath a video with a caption referring to Muslim immigrants. That ticket there, fuck off back to your own country, and it says Muslim. Oh, immigrants. Muslim immigrants. If you just said Muslims, then you, you take this action. But it doesn't, so it's actually an ignore. Facebook allows users to say more abusive things about Muslim immigrants than it does about Muslims. They are still Muslim. What are you saying? I say if it's Muslim immigrants, they're still Muslims. <laughs> they're still Muslims, yeah, but they're... <laughs> yeah. So that, yeah, exactly, like that makes them less protected. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah, because saying that they're thinking might be physical inferiority. Okay. If it said like Muslim immigrants come, for example, that would be the lead. People are debating very sensitive issues on Facebook, including issues like immigration, very currently. And that political debate can be entirely legitimate. That's why you allow people to say Muslim immigrants get out of Britain but not Muslim get out of Britain. We're trying to distinguish there uh, between hate speech, which is against a class of people. Do you not think Muslim immigrant get out of Britain is hate speech? Uh, again, they're, they're, this is something that we've looked at in a lot of detail. It's very hard. It, it, this is right on that line. Is it hate speech? It's right on that line. We've not defined it as hate speech. If you are, again, expressing a view about the government's immigration policy. We discovered that some far-right pages receive special protection on Facebook. The very same filthy, disgusting Muslim bastards that have been raping British children. The Britain First Facebook page had more than 2 million followers when it was deleted in March while we were filming, after its leaders were convicted of racially aggravated harassment. 
they got taken down, so they're now, they're not a hate group or a hate org, but they're just not allowed on the platform anymore. Look, we've been tracking that page since it had 300,000 followers. It ended up with up to 2 million followers at one point before that page was pulled. The question can be asked, why did it take so long? I was chatting about the other Britain First stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty much like, we marked the page so much for content, so much, like, they had like, eight or nine violations when they're only like five. But obviously they have a lot of followers who are generating a lot of revenue for Facebook. If a page has five pieces of content that violate Facebook's rules, our reporter is told it should be taken down. But Britain First was a highly popular Facebook page. These pages are shielded and can't be deleted by ordinary content moderators at CPL. It would never met the threshold before it was taken down. Oh, I think it did. But it was just a Timmy fan, so it was kind of shielded. What does that actually mean? Hmm? What does that actually mean? Stays up. But when you say like shielded, it goes to like another queue, for like the FTs, and they make that call. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes, like, yeah, it just depends on what it is. Like, I mean, Britain First is very like a lot of hot topics. When shielded pages have content that breaks the rules. They're put into the shielded review queue, so they can be assessed by Facebook itself. What does shielded review actually mean? Generally, the What's the criteria? Shielded, like you, be, you just want to be more careful. So if a page is a lot of followers, you don't want to willy-nilly just take it down. You want to be hunting sure that you're taking it down for the right reasons. Sure. Okay, there's five strikes here, but this has like a million followers and I don't feel comfortable just like taking it down. Yeah. Call me and we'll have a look. Was that like uh, the Britain First stuff? Yeah, something like that. If it is a large page, yeah. do they get sort of special consideration or...? We're just very careful. Facebook's special consideration appears to also apply to far-right figurehead Tommy Robinson. Our children are being killed. They're being killed. If they're not being raped and destroyed in Rochdale Rotherham, they're being butchered and maimed in city centres, outside concert halls. That's the future for our generations. In March this year, Robinson was permanently banned from Twitter, but his Facebook page is still active. This May, he was jailed for contempt of court following a Facebook Live video he posted outside a court in Leeds. You know, if you see one of these pages comes out, Tony Robinson ones, yeah. is there any point in me looking through the content? Um, yeah. Like, don't worry too much about deleting their stuff because those pages are, like, shielded. So, like, if you delete a video or whatever, like... You haven't deleted Tommy Robinson's video, it just goes to like, this shielded review queue. Um, but I can't see anything there. I think it's all banned. With 900,000 followers, Robinson's Facebook page is so popular, it's been given the same protected status as governments and news organisations. When they say freedom of speech, what they're really saying is, we really want to permit people to do whatever they want on this platform and we will do the bare minimum to make that socially acceptable. Their business model is really tied to being able to publish whatever they want. And it once you understand that the nature of large internet networks is that the harshest, meanest voices are going to dominate, what you realize is that the more open you make the platform, inherently the more unpleasant, inappropriate, bad content you're gonna get on it. Why does Tommy Robinson get a shielded account, the same as the government or the BBC or high-profile organisations that are respected? Uh, if the content is indeed violating, it will go. Because they're very valuable accounts, these, aren't they? But They've got hundreds of thousands of followers. Again, I want to be clear, this is not a discussion about money. This is a discussion about political speech. And I think people would expect us to be careful and cautious before we take down their political speech. We didn't come here for clickbait, spam, fake news and data misuse. That's not okay. Which is why Facebook is changing. From now Facebook on, has we'll launched a high-profile campaign to help protect improve its image. To help you enjoy we didn't take a broad enough view of our responsibility, and that was a big mistake. And it was my mistake, and I'm sorry. I started Facebook, I run it, and I'm responsible for what happens here. I understand why it's been hard for people to come to grips with all this, but the incentives to do so now are really compelling. And I just hope that as a consequence of this 
film that the tone of the debate becomes sharper, more focused, more persistent, and that we stop accepting their excuses, we stop accepting their assurances. CPL told us, ensuring our trainers and employees are always fully trained and up to date on Facebook policy changes is critically important to us. So we're investigating this matter as a priority and taking immediate steps with Facebook. This has included conducting extensive refresher training within the last week for all our trainers. We're one of the most heavily scrutinized companies in the world, and that's right. Uh, we have a lot of reach to people in many different countries. It's right that we're held to high standards. We also hold ourselves to high standards. Uh, you've identified some areas where we've failed. Uh, and I'm here today uh, to apologize for those failings and make it clear that we do recognize uh, that they were weaknesses, that we should not uh, be in this position. Uh, all I can say is that we are committed, wherever uh, failings are brought to our attention, to taking them seriously, to addressing them, and to trying to make sure that we do better in future.